Welcome to our lecture online. Remember in video number eight in this playlist, we had these two vectors or these two vector representations or phasor representations of the two voltages that we were trying to add and then we realized we're not quite ready to do that. We realized that there was a phase difference of 10 degrees, that V2 lagged V1 by 10 degrees. But how do we add the two? And I thought it would be better to wait until we have the tools to do that. And now we have the methodology and the tools. What we're going to do here is we're going to take the two voltages that are, that are written in terms of the magnitude and the phase angle, and we're going to convert them to the real and imaginary parts, then add the real and imaginary parts together. And just like in the previous video, it'll be fairly easy to do so. So let's go ahead and first take V1, and that's going to be equal to the magnitude, 3 times the phase angle of minus 110 degrees. And then we're going to write this as the magnitude 3 times the cosine of 110 degrees plus j times the sine, oh, not the cosine of 110, would be minus 110 degrees plus j times the sine of minus 110 degrees. And let's see here, we want to convert that. What's the cosine of 100, minus 110 degrees? That's the same as the cosine of the positive 110 degrees because the cosine of a negative angle is the same as the cosine of a positive angle. So the, the cosine of that would be minus 0.34 times 3. And we get minus 1.026. So this is equal to minus 1.026. And then on the imaginary part, let's see here, we take the sine of a negative 110, that's the minus the sine of a plus 110, so 110, take the sine of that, then multiply times the negative 1, and multiply times 3, and we get minus 2.819, minus j times 2.819. So we've converted from this format into the real and imaginary parts. We're going to do the same for V2, which is equal to 4 times or not times, but with a phase angle of minus 120 degrees, which is equal to 4 times the cosine of minus 120 degrees plus j times the sine of minus 120 degrees, which is equal to, nope, let me close the brackets. So we take the cosine of a positive 120 degrees, because that's the same as the cosine of a negative 120, times 4, which is a minus 2.000, and then on the second part here, we take the sine of 120. We make that negative because that's equal to negative the sine of a positive 120 degrees. And times 4, we get minus j times 3.464. Now we're going to add them together. So now we have V1 plus V2. When we add them together, notice we get a minus 3.026. And this is minus, let's see here, 9 plus 4, that's 3, 1, that would be 6, 7, 8. 8 plus 4, that's 2, 1, and that would be 6 and a j. So this here would be the sum of the two voltages. So this is equal to a minus 3.026, that's the real part, minus j times 6.283, that's the imaginary part. So now we're ready to, to return that back to the regular format where we have the magnitude and the phase angle. So for the magnitude, V max, that is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. We don't care if they're negative. That would be 3.026 squared plus 6.283 squared, which is equal to 6.283. 6.283 squared at plus 3.026 squared at equals, take the square root, and I get 6.974. 6.974 as the magnitude. So that means that this is equal to a magnitude of 6.974. Now we need the phase angle. And the phase angle is going to be equal to the inverse tangent of the minus 6.283 divided by minus 3.026. Now here we have to be careful because the two negatives will cancel out and we'll get a different angle. So let me show you what that means. We get 6.283 
divided by 3.026. That gives us a phase angle, if we take the inverse tangent of that, of 64.3 degrees. 64.3 degrees. But notice, 64.3 degrees would give us a, a vector in this direction, and we know that it's going to be somewhere between these two vectors. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 180 degrees. If we do that, minus 180, we get this is equal to minus 115.7 degrees. And now we get the correct angle because we know it has to be somewhere between those two. So the angle is minus 115.7 degrees. And that would be the sum of the two voltages. And that's then in terms of the magnitude and the phase angle. And again, how did I know to subtract 180 degrees? Because I knew that the angle had to be somewhere in this direction. And since they were both negative, I know that the result will be either in that quadrant or in this quadrant, since I know it has to be in the third quadrant. I just have to shift it by 180 degrees to get, to get the correct final result. And so now you can see that it's a whole lot easier to do it like this using the phasor components rather than trying to find the x and y components like we normally do with vectors. And that's how it's done.